The Seventh-day Adventist Church was founded on prophecies concerning the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's no coincidence that the Bible contains many warnings about false prophets. Despite the unbiblical nature of her visions, her followers continued to accept her as God's messenger and her writings as inspired as the Bible. Mrs. White wrote on nearly every area of Christian life, including doctrine, diet, health, recreation, and marriage. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Central Adventist doctrine, which states that the judgment of believers' works will determine their salvation, is blatantly unbiblical and is not taught by any legitimate Christian denomination. This doctrine teaches at some point in time between 1844 and the second coming of Christ, every believer's name will come up in judgment. At that point in time, if one has any unconfessed sins, even forgotten sins, or if one does not demonstrate perfect obedience to the Ten Commandments, especially the Fourth, he will be lost. This teaching is diametrically opposed to the New Testament gospel of grace. In all man-made religions, the authority of God's scripture an unchanging word is challenged. The Seventh-day Adventists are no exception. They have their own version of the Bible, known as the Clear Word Bible, which inserts the words and ideas of Ellen G. White directly into the biblical text. For example, in the ninth chapter of the book of Daniel, 300 words have been added to the Holy Scriptures. A blatant example of this type of alteration can be seen in Daniel chapter 8, verse 14 which in the King James Version simply reads, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. However, in the Adventist Clear Word Version, this passage has been greatly altered to read, After two thousand three hundred prophetic days, or two thousand three hundred years, God will step in, proclaim the truth about himself, and restore the ministry of the sanctuary in heaven to its rightful place. This is when the judgment will begin of which the cleansing of the earthly sanctuary was a type. One can see the extent to which Seventh-day Adventists are prepared to go to support their prophetess, even to the manipulation of Scripture. The Clear Word Bible, published in 1994 as an expanded paraphrase to nurture faith and growth, is nothing more than added distortions to the Word of God to support Adventist theology. They have also published their study Bible with Ellen G. White quotes included as an inspired commentary. Other heretical Adventist doctrines include the teaching that Christ's atonement for sins on the cross was incomplete, that Jesus Christ is Michael the Archangel, and that there is no hell. L By conveniently having a vision, and this introduced the teaching to her followers. I saw that the Holy Sabbath is and will be the separating wall between the true Israel of God and unbelievers. The Sabbath will be the great test of loyalty. When the final test shall be brought to bear upon men, then the line of distinction will be drawn between those who serve God and those who serve Him not. The keeping of the true Sabbath is an evidence of loyalty. One class received the mark of the beast, the other choosing the token of allegiance to divine authority, received the seal of God. So failing to keep the Sabbath resulted in one receiving the mark of the beast and losing one's eternal life. Dr. Ben Carson announcing this week that he is officially running for president. I'm Ben Carson and I'm a candidate for president of the United States. Dr. Carson, I wonder whether you'd like to come up here for a few moments. I do know, in looking at prophecy, that the United States will play a big role. More than likely, any persecution, particularly of the Sabbath, 
will come from the right, not from the left. Any persecution, particularly of the Sabbath, will come from the right, not from the left. It's an honor to address the members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I am flattered and humbled to have this chance to speak to such a vibrant and active group of people. One of the things I admire most about Seventh-day Adventists, in addition to your faith, is your commitment to preach, teach, and heal. Your emphasis on educating and nurturing your fellow man and woman is a model for all people of faith to follow. And your network of schools and health care facilities, health care facilities, health care facilities. Doctor, what's a favorite passage from Ellen White, from Ellen White, from Ellen White on wellness and lifestyle? One that's uh, particularly meaningful uh, in a deeper sense, sort of tying the physical and the spiritual together, would be from early writings on the ministry of Christ. In fact, let me read it to you. Jesus began his work by breaking Satan's power over the suffering. He restored the sick to health, gave sight to the blind, and healed the lame, causing them to leap for joy and to glorify God. You know, that to me is so important because when I think of the life of Christ, he spent his time healing people. Every place he went, he healed people. And then through that, he was able to have an even greater ministry. He's put into action the tenets of those beliefs, the tenets of those beliefs, the tenets of those beliefs. For that is the calling to all of us, not just to believe, but to act. I know the Seventh-day Adventist Church has a strong commitment to family, a commitment that is represented in how you observe the Sabbath together, in how you observe the Sabbath together, in how you observe the Sabbath together. Our people and our nation will be ready to embrace the future. It's the future. It's the future. Thank you again for inviting me to address you. May God bless you and your families. May God bless the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I was, I was in Idaho last year, and there was a Mexican doctor that came to see me, a lady. And she said, I have a practice down in Mexico, and my partner was approached by a Catholic and said, the bishop is dying of cancer, but she knows you Adventists have a special health message. Would you be willing to treat him? The doctor said, if on a condition that I can give the bishop Bible studies. I want to explain to him where that health message came from. And, she, and he went back and came back and said, the bishop says yes. Okay, send the bishop to my office. So the bishop started coming. He put him on a special plan, prayed with him, and pretty soon the cancer started to disappear. And eventually it totally disappeared. And but now it's time for the doctor to knock my house of the bishop. Hello, Brother Bishop, I am here to give you a Bible study. Can I come in? The bishop said, Please do. You're welcome. They talked for a while, and he said, okay, I'd like to, I'd like to talk, discuss with you the spirit of prophecy and how it gave us the health message. Could I do that? The bishop said, yes, but before you do, could I show you something? Come, to, come with me to my library. So they went to the library. And on the library, all of the published writings of Ellen G. White. The doctor was stunned. Brother Bishop, how in the world... Do you have all these books? He said, and I've read every one of them too. You have. And what do you think about them? He said, I'm a Jesuit. It is my job to read everything. And I want you to know that we Jesuits believe that Ellen G. White is the only true prophet of any church today. And we believe everything she has written and I will tell you another thing. That is why we don't want Seventh-day Adventists to believe anything that she writes. Because if they do, they will know everything we're doing and everything we're planning to do. This was a stunning news to our doctor. You know everything 
that we do and we don't even believe and act on what we the light we've received. Greetings, comrades. My name is Philip Anderson. I'm the Illinois state leader. I'll be in the event. We're uh, gathered here today to celebrate the 119th birthday of Adolf Hitler. Our first speaker will be Tony Zirkel. Tony is running for the for Congress in the 2nd District of Indiana. Tony went to the Naval Academy. He was the president of his class and graduated in the top 5%. Currently, he runs three law offices in Indiana, and with that, I'd like to bring Tony to stand. I'd like to thank uh, you for having me this evening, and if you haven't picked up a copy of the book, Desire of Ages, there's a few more left over there. It's one of the best books I've ever read. Finally, they had many, many of these white women were being sent down to uh, Israel because that was the place of the month. And it struck me that in South Bend, when I was prosecuting these adultery bookstores, that at least three of the four of them were, were owned by the Jewish community. And I started to become concerned about the culture uh, that's, that's present within that community and what we can do to change it. And we certainly can't change it if we're spending our money and giving them our credit cards and, and buying into their materials, because that gives them more money and more power. But we have to, as a white community, we have to stop sending our money to the pornographers that are exploiting our white people. Uh, but we cannot survive. We'll see a consistent uh, decline in population within the white community. 
This is a genocide that's directed at the white race, and we need to stand up now before it's too, too late. And if the white community cannot unite, we are going to continue seeing that there will be fewer and fewer white influence in this country. There will be an increase in amount of immigration. And uh, our say, as in the world, our influence in the world will continue to decline. And if we as a European, the descendants of European, are going to have a disciplined society, continued influence in this world, we must take a look at the disciplined society. If we do not, we continue to see less influence in the world. We can see an increase, uh, increase in disease, and destruction, and the weakening of our race. I'm asking you all to unite and think about these issues so we can choose life, we can preserve our families. I have some very strong ideas on how we can fix our society. And again, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Doctor, what's a favorite passage from Ellen White on wellness and lifestyles? One that's uh, particularly meaningful uh, in a deeper sense, sort of tying the physical and the spiritual together, would be from early writings on the ministry of Christ. In fact, let me read it to you. Jesus began his work by breaking Satan's power over the suffering. He restored the sick to health, gave sight to the blind, and healed the lame causing them to leap for joy and to glorify God. You know, that to me is, is so important because when I think of the life of Christ, he spent his time healing people. Every place he went, he healed people. And then through that, he was able to have an even greater ministry.
Dr. Carson, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling fine. Okay, good. Okay. What are What are you going to say at today's rally? Do you have a plan? Uh, I don't know. And I know you're traveling um, today to Washington, D.C. You're a guest of um, Mark Sanford's to see the Pope. How, do, how does that make you feel? What, what are you thinking about being able to uh, go to D.C. And, and see Pope Francis? Well, it's an exciting time uh, for our nation, and it's uh, fun to be a part of it. And in terms of the Pope's message of tolerance, um, what's your view on his message of tolerance? Well, I'm very much in favor of tolerance, but uh, the difference between me and a lot of people is I think tolerance should be extended in both directions, not just a one-way street. And, and you don't think that the comments uh, regarding uh, Muslim as president are out of um, out of line with the message of tolerance that Pope Francis is bringing? Uh, I don't think so. I'm certainly not out of line with uh, the thinking of the founders of our nation, who actually addressed this very issue. Uh, if you go back and look at their writings, and uh, you know they said that you know, and they talked specifically about Muslims, and they said. Uh, they would not recommend that that happen. Uh, however, uh, if the population of the United States changed and we had a different belief system, a different basis, then of course you could change it to whatever you want to. And the Constitution would, is made to be able to accommodate a complete change in the populace and, and what they believe in. population of the United States changed and we had a different belief system, a different basis, then of course you could change it to whatever you want to. And the Constitution would, is made to be able to accommodate a complete change in the populace and, and what they believe in. This week's Time Magazine cover story is proof enough that if you want to know the truth about Islam, don't go to Rome. Go to Bethlehem instead. On the screen behind me, you see the cover story, title of the cover story there on Time. The Pope confronts Islam, and unless you slept through the last few days, you surely know that the whole world has watched as the Roman pontiff this week made his first papal journey to an Islamic nation, as it turns out, the nation of Turkey. A journey even more intensely now, perhaps more critically now, sc scrutinized given the Pope's carefully crafted, unsubtle public condemnation of Islam the as a religion of Quran teaches violence. the seeds of every divine truth that you and I embrace. The what seeds if are all there. The spirit, the mighty spirit of Allah. By the way, I got some letters from viewers after that last teaching. And one viewer said, don't you know that the, that the name Allah is a name for Lucifer? Oh, I hope you never, I hope you never, 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 never embrace that. Allah, listen carefully now, Allah is closer to Elohim, the Hebrew name for God, than is our English word God. In fact, hold on to your seats. The English name God is a Nordic pagan God. We've taken a pagan God's name and we said, that's the name of our God.